Thank you. Human rights are in crisis again. Um, in the 1990s, when I was at Amnesty International, we thought we were living through the worst times in human rights. We had the genocide in uh, Serbia. We had a genocide in uh, the Rwanda, endless wars in, uh, in Africa, ending with the invasion of uh, Iraq, followed by decades of war on uh, terror, with all the violation of human rights that those conflicts generate. But it seems that that past is, was not that terrible when we confront what is being developing since the beginning of the war between Russia and uh, Ukraine. But throughout all those events, upheavals, uh, gross violation of human rights, it seems that Iran continued to remain the graveyard of human rights, the graveyard where human rights violations are taking place almost amidst indifference of the international community. Uh, when it comes to human rights violations, I was just reading again this morning the, final, the latest uh, Amnesty International report. Iran ticks all the boxes, massacres, torture, execution, and forced disappearance, uh, violence against uh, women, confiscation of freedoms and public liberties, brutality of uh, the repression. Uh, but it seems that there are complexities in organizing international solidarity, especially among progressive movements. And I talk from the perspective of a progressive organization, being myself not just a human rights defender, but an, an old uh, Marxist. Among those organizations, it seems that we have some hesitation to criticize Iran, to criticize an Islamic revolution in the in the midst of widespread Islamophobia. So there is an hesitation there. There is a reluctance to be seen to join hands with Washington and the West when the Iran government is deploying an anti-imperialist rhetoric and posture. And there is also suspicion towards the color revolutions manipulated by Western powers to achieve regime change. So because of all these reasons, it seems that there are hesitancy amongst the global progressive movement to really join hands with the uh, Iranian uh, freedom fighters. But to me, this is confusion because we are talking about human rights violations. And when we talk about human rights violations, we talk about victims, whoever the perpetrators are. When we talk about human rights violation, we talk about international human rights law that binds all government irrespective of their ideology. When we talk about human rights violation, we talk about universal rights that apply to all members of humanity. And the last time I checked, the Iranian people were still members of humanity. So,
irrespective of the context, irrespective of the geopolitical uh, development, uh, we cannot, because of politics, sacrifice on our duty of solidarity to all those who are victims of human rights violation and to all those who are fighting for a human rights regime. And that starts by the end. That starts with the end of impunity. There cannot be human rights if impunity is allowed to prosper. And the end of impunity is the basis for international solidarity, which is nothing more than the expression of our obligations towards other fellow human beings. There is no human right if there is no human obligations. Solidarity is the key. And we showed it how solidarity was successful in ending apartheid in South Africa, in ending the military dictatorship in Latin America, in bringing an end to the Vietnam War. Uh, it is indeed time that we step up the solidarity for the struggle for human rights in Iran. <clears throat> To conclude, I would submit that the Iranian resistance needs to reach out to governments in the global south, not just in the west, to argue their perspective, to inform, and to win the argument. The progressive movement must be vigilant in the face of global geopolitical rearrangements. For 50 years, human rights were hampered by the East-West divide. We are now witnessing a new divide between the West and the Global South, especially with the rise of the BRICS. We have to pressure the BRICS to articulate their commitment to universal human rights and use that commitment to screen any new application. Yes, the progressive movement now must prioritize Iran alongside the human rights movement. When resistance is based on justice, freedom, and equality, it will win because it becomes the embodiment of the people. And no government can win the people. Thank you.